What's up, everyone? The 2024 PFL regular season is upon us, and I am speaking with one of the lightweight contenders that'll be competing in the tournament this year. His name's Elvin Espinosa. He trains out of Killcliffe FC, and he joins me today ahead of his fight against Anthony Romero. He's in Las Vegas right now, and it's fight week. So, Elvin, I'm kind of a jerk for scheduling this for fight week, but I appreciate you pulling up, man. It's all good. No, thank you for having me. It is a uh, absolute pleasure to have you back. I'm glad that we could connect. I'm glad that we can do this. Elvin, you've been with the PFL for uh, a, a number of years, since 2021, and you've been fighting on many showcase bouts over the years. You've also competed on the PFL Challenger Series, and I was hoping you could tell me over the years, since 2021, from when you first signed with the PFL to what it's like today, do you see a night and day difference in terms of how this promotion has grown over the years? Yeah, it's, it's been growing. Uh, it's very different from when I first started. First, it's like PFL was like starting to grow when I started. Now it's uh, now they bought Bellator and then the whole merger. And now it has a lot more eyes, a lot more fans now. More people are watching it now. So it, it's and then I get to see like just the growth from the like the change of gloves, the change of like uh apparel what they're wearing now you know so if i got the first shorts like in 21 so the shorts now and, the, and the, all the gear it just it's cool to see it grow and evolve elvin in 2023 you competed on the challenger series you choked out demir it was a fantastic performance and then you followed that up by fighting keone Diggs. he was a really tough guy and he went the distance with you and that kind of surprised me i think of you i think of pressure i think of grappling i think of wrestling and i think of submissions right off the top of my head and i was thinking to myself going into that fight Elvin's going to get this fight down to the ground. He's going to probably end up choking this guy out. That's what I ended up predicting. Were you surprised that Diggs went the full 15 minutes with you? No, yeah, man. It's, uh, Diggs is uh, tough. He's never been finished from what I saw. You know, he's, he has two split decision losses that could have gone his way. So he's a tough dude. He, if anything, um, he could have, you know, he could have been uh, undefeated also. Just uh, those two losses that he had that were, like, so close. So, but he hung in there the first round, like, I was on top, ground and pounding. You know, I, I think he's, he was, you know, it's Hawaiian. So those guys are tough, bro. The Hawaiians don't quit. Uh, and for you specifically, like 2023 is very successful. We continue the winning streak. And your last fight was in August. And now here we are in April. And I know you're a pretty intense guy. And you're like the sort of guy that would fight like every two weeks if you could. You've been on the shelf for a while. And that's not through any fault of your own. That's just... You're you're at the mercy of the PFL schedule, and I understand that. Is it hard to sit out for a number of months, considering all the success that you had in 2023? And does that layoff, like, I don't know, do you get antsy after a few months? Like, man, I really want to get in there. I really want to fight. I want to get on this uh, uh, this next PFL card. The next one doesn't show up till spring. And is that a tough uh, thing to do to have to wait for a few months? Yeah, it is because you know it, it gets. I'm always hoping to just keep, you know, progressing in my career and getting more wins on my record and, you know, just uh, building my experience. But um, but it just lights a fire under me because I'm like, you know, when it's coming, I finally got a, a chance to fight again. It just uh, it gets me excited, you know. So at the end of the day, I'm just uh, still growing, you know. I just I'm still like in the beginning of my career and I'm hyped for this fight and then the next one. Elvin, 2024, the PFL regular season. Now it's complete. It's a completely different dynamic. Like, you know, the format of the season and you know, the schedule already, like, you know, exactly when you'll be fighting. You just don't know who you'll be fighting. And is that kind of a relief in a way like 2024? Like, you know, you're going to have a lot of fights and you could potentially win a million dollars. I mean, that'd be quite a year for you. How excited were you when you found out that you were going to be a part of the 2024 PFL season? It's you know it's it's super exciting, man. It, it's very it's it's life changing, you know. I saw I saw Impa do it, you know. He's it changed his life. He's for the better, and he's having a lot of great opportunities for him to rise. So I can't wait to do the same thing, you know. Win it, win it this year, and you know change my family's life and be able to start a family, maybe have a baby next year, or you know who knows. But uh, you got to do it one step at a time, one fight at a time. And you brought up Impa, and I was going to ask you about him. He comes into the PFL. He goes on the Challenger Series. He gets signed to the regular season. Then he ends up winning a belt. And so he has been there and done that. And is when, can you, like, pick his brain? Does he give you any sort of advice about, like, how to manage the load, how to manage your body and take care of yourself to go through a grueling PFL season? Because it's a lot. You're talking about 
the best fighters in the world compete in this thing. And even guys from the UFC have come over and they really haven't experienced a ton of success in the seasonal format is having a teammate like Impa, like, does that give you an advantage over maybe some of the other contenders in the, your uh, weight class? Yeah, it gives me an advantage. Like, you know, I get to see what he's doing. I get to like follow along his path and his trainings and see what he's doing. And what can I do to match his energy and, he just has a lot of like you know faith in himself and confidence and you know seeing that he has it helps me he's helping me build my own confidence and you know and faith in myself and uh for me it's uh grateful to have him in my corner and you know as a teammate and always being this is my second time being able to fight with him in the same card so and if we get to do this all year it's gonna be a dope a dope year i look at your cohort i look at all the the entire landscape of fighters that are in your division whom you'll be competing against this year and there's a lot of killers in this uh in this division you have solomon renfro yourself mads brunell jj wilson pitbull adam piccolati um and then of course anthony romero and then a bunch of other people i'm not even going to name like when you like look at this like shark tank of contenders like are you like even maybe more excited to fight against some of these guys? Some of these guys, I'm sure you've you've seen compete in Bellator over the years, and you got to be extra excited to have the opportunity to test yourself against some of the best contenders in the world. No, yeah, it, it, it's I'm not allowed. It's nerve wracking, but it's what like a nerve wracking that makes me excited. Like it gets me excited to train harder. You know, I have to. I know I'm going to be facing. There's three uh, former Bellator world champions there, so it, it, it's it's like I got to be on my game. You know, my next fight could be. Uh, any of those champions and that's already putting me at the elite level you know like that uh, this is where I'm at and you know I got this far and hearing those names uh, it's just it drives me to work harder and not give up on myself and just keep going you know I'm doing this for my family and I'm excited. Well, let's talk about your first test of the 2024 PFL regular season. It's going to be against the Canadian Anthony Romero, tough guy. 12 and 2 record. The last time we saw him was against Olivier Aubin Mercier. He's a G. He shows up on short notice. That fight doesn't end up going his way. Can you tell me a little bit? Like when you look at Anthony Romero, like what are some of the things that you see about him? Is there anything about his game that kind of stands out to you? No, he's, he's really uh, well rounded. You know, he's um, he's he moves good striking. He moves well. He's uh, he has good ground. I think he's he's a black belt also. Uh, he's wrestled. So he actually fought one of my teammates, Antonio. Uh, the, the Spartan Caruso. Yeah, Spartan. Yep, in the the challenge series, the same day as me. We both had the same day, and um, it's funny because I we both were the finalists. So I always had a feeling we were gonna fight each other one day because I'm like, man, I feel like it's gonna have to happen, and look, it, it ended up happening. Well, here we go, Anthony Romero. When I look at him, I think he's a dynamic fighter. I think he's an intelligent fighter, and for you, I think of pressure. And I think of grappling, I think of wrestling, and I think of submissions. When like, what's the key to beating somebody like Romero? In your opinion, I don't want to ask you about your game plan because I want to watch this fight on April twelfth. But at the same time, just in general, Elvin, like, what are what are some of the things that you're going to need to do in order to uh, get a victory over a very uh, formidable opponent in Romero? Yeah, no, he, yeah, he's a smart guy, so I got to be patient. I got to. Um... I got to put the pressure on him and, you know, just get him worried about different things. My striking, my wrestling. I just got to make him, I got to make him overthink and be worried of, because I know I'm pretty sure he, he knows what I'm going to do. I just got to make him second guess himself and just keep guessing what I'm trying to do to him. And, and you no know, confident in there. Elvin, uh, I wanted to ask you about your striking because your wrestling, your grappling, your takedowns are so successful and you've dominated fights in that manner in the past. But can you tell me a little bit like the evolution of your striking? Do you have like technique and like skills in your back pocket that we haven't even seen before that you're prepared to show on April 12th? Yeah, man, I have, you know, I, I, I do a lot of stuff. I just, I haven't been able to, to do it. Like, you know, like, uh, I got my spinning heel kicks, you know, my my question mark kicks, my spinning back kicks. I, I have it. It's, it's, in, it's in the bag. I just got to, you know, let it out. 
Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you'll get an opportunity to check that out on April 12th. Make sure you check this fight out. It'll be available worldwide on ESPN. Elvin, for people who have never seen you fight before, this is going to be like a, a, an opportunity not only for you to showcase your skills and your talents, but it's an opportunity for fight fans from all over the world to get a, a chance to, to see you compete. It's uh, going to be on a huge card, the regular season format. That's going to bring more eyeballs. And for people who've never seen you compete before, what are some of the things that they could expect out of you when you uh, fight here in a few days? You can expect me, you know, to not not quit on myself. I'm going to be fighting to the, the last bell if I have to. Um, there's going to be a dog in there and there's no quitting me. Just know um, I'm going to give it all I got and um, I plan to win every single fight I do this year. I know that you're from Nicaragua. I know that you're the son of immigrants and you represent your country also when you go out there and to and, and perform. And to the best of my knowledge, there's never been a prominent MMA champion from Nicaragua. Like what would that mean to you to be able to represent your country and like your heritage? And have you thought about that? And like, does that add like more pressure to you when, uh, when you think about the, uh, 2024 PFL season? It doesn't add pressure, but it, it does light a fire under me. You know, I'm excited for that because there's been boxers, only a few boxers that have become like world champions, and there's no MMA fighters that have gotten as far as I have. Um, so I'm excited to be one of the first, like, as of right now, um, technically I'm the, the highest ranked Nicaraguan fighter. So uh, I'm actually like, you know, I'm happy I get to represent that, uh, my country and my parents. You know, and I can't wait to bring the belt to Nicaragua one day and, you know, be the first champion in MMA. MMA. Well, Elvin, I appreciate your time this evening, sir. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to watching you compete on April 12th. If there, if there are any people out there that you would like to thank or any sponsors that we need to plug before we uh, go, let's do it. Yeah, just uh, shout out to my sponsors, uh, Milka. It's uh, a soda from Nicaragua that, you know, they're sponsoring me for this this year. So I'm excited for them. And um, also my other sponsors, uh, Desmond and Dover Law Firm. And, you know, just shout out to my friends, my family, everybody who supports me. And I do this all for them. And, you know, I'm, glad, I'm grateful for everything I've been given in my life to do this. Well, thank you very much, Elvin. I look forward to speaking with you as we progress through the 2024 PFL regular season. Thanks for your time, and I wish you the best of skill. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. See you on the winner's side.